used to date a girl that lived on Jackson Street. Many people in the area knows of what goes down on Jackson. One weekend, when her family went on a fishing trip out of state, she stayed home because she had to work. That's when she asked me if I could go sleep over to keep her company. Right in front of the house across the street was a forest and their mailbox. While we were sleeping, I had to get up to use the bathroom. For some reason, I had a slight goosebump when I woke up. It was like someone was watching us. I didn't think much of it since I've seen a lot of paranormal things before. Anyways, before I went to use the bathroom, something kept telling me to look outside the window. I remember using the dim light on my phone to guide me to the door because I didn't want to wake my girlfriend up. I noticed that it was around 2.30 a.m. at this time. Something just kept on telling me to look outside the window. I knew I shouldn't have because 1. It was Jackson Street and 2. It was the dead of night. Stupidly, I opened the curtains enough just to peek out. Surprised but also not surprising, I saw what it seemed to be an older lady with long hair. She was dressed in a dirty white dress, barefoot, slouching and standing right next to their mailbox. All I could remember was that her face was dark and she was kind of looking down for a moment. I swear I only opened the curtains up enough just so my eyes could see through, but within that moment, I could see her head slightly move up and she was looking right into the window I was standing at. All the hairs on my body stood up and I was covered in goosebumps. I stood there for what felt to be an eternity and then let go of the curtains and climbed back into bed without using the bathroom. Just a few moments later, I could hear the front door being knocked on. It was gentle at first, enough to hear if you were inside the house. Then it grew louder and louder, and it started sounding like whatever was knocking was pounding, trying to knock the door in. I remember my parents used to say that if you feel like you're in a dream and something bad is happening, pinch yourself. So I did, and believe me, it hurt. The pounding went on for a few minutes, and then it went dead silent. I forgot to mention, but the house is a little older, and nothing was updated yet. Even maybe to this day it's not been updated. Anyways, it went dead quiet and I was just laying there listening. I used to carry a pocket knife everywhere I went and left it by the side of the bed. I reached for it and opened it up just in case. A few moments passed by and I started hearing the steps of the basement creek as if someone was walking upstairs. I started to have doubts if her parents were just testing us. I waited and waited until the creaking stopped. At this point, I was thinking to myself maybe I was thinking too much and just playing things in my head. At that moment, the basement door slammed shut. I thought to myself, okay, either someone broke in or there really is something. I got myself ready to jump at the door as the stairs heading up to where we were were creaking slowly. When the sound was about halfway up the stairs, I sat up on the bed just ready for whatever was going to come in. Right when it reached almost the last step, I held my breath and just waited. The sound of the steps stopped and I could hear my heart pounding fast. There were no sounds going up or down the stairs anymore and then it was as if the front door just slammed shut by itself and I could hear a laughter outside. I ran to the window and peeked out again, but this time there was no one. The old lady had disappeared and it was dead quiet again. I waited for about half an hour just to hold on to my knife in case and occasionally peeking out the window just to make sure. After a while, I climbed back into bed and slept. The next morning, I asked my girlfriend how her sleep was and she said that it was good. She slept through everything. I never told her about what happened that night and never slept over again after that weekend. So I've been living in my house in St. Paul for a few years and nothing extremely bad has ever happened. But on this particular night, I couldn't sleep well. 
When I finally fell asleep, I had a dream that I was laying in my bed, on my back in complete darkness. I dreamt that a friend of mine was also sleeping at the foot of my bed on the floor. As I laid in bed staring up into darkness, it felt like somebody stood up on my bed by my feet. But my feet was still in between their legs. I could feel the weight bearing down on my bed of whatever was standing there. I called over to my friend and asked him if that was them, and they replied no. The footsteps started making its way up towards my upper half. With every step, I could feel my bed going down wherever the feet were. And then I had sleep paralysis. I asked who was there, but there was no reply. Suddenly, I felt hair brush against me, against my face, as if something was hovering above me. It really felt like somebody's face was hovering just above mine. I broke free from this paralysis and jumped out of my bed and ran to my bedroom light switch. I kept on flicking the switch but it wouldn't turn on. I opened my door and reached into the hallway to try that light switch but nothing either. I could see a little bit at this point because it was like the moon was shining some light through my shades, just barely visible. So I ran over to my curtains and tried to roll them up to see what was on my bed. But no matter how many times I tried to roll up the curtains, it was a never-ending curtain. So instead of rolling the curtains, I quickly lifted the curtain and turned around to my bed. And there was a woman in red, with her makeup smeared, crazy hair, and rotten flesh. Right when the moonlight touched her, she fell off my bed. I woke up screaming and sweaty. My heart was pounding. I met my girlfriend back in my college days. After graduating from college, we went our own separate ways. She got married, but things didn't work out. So now she's divorced with two kids. Likewise, I got married, but then got divorced too. We finally found each other again just several months ago. After all these years, she still looks attractive to me, but she's kind of weird now. She holds a professional job and has no problem at work, but at home, she claims to see ghosts everywhere and hears them talking too. Shamans have been called to come help her, one of which said that her shaman spirit guides are trying to come get her, and at the same time, the wild spirits are also trying to get her too. That shaman told her parents and her parents found a more powerful shaman master to keep the wild spirits at bay and only allow the shaman spirit guides to come in so that way she can start practicing to become a shaman. If they couldn't do this, then the spirits will not allow her to live peacefully. However, so far, none of the shamans could help her. She's been making me feel uncomfortable. If I would talk to her about these spirits, she would whisper to me to stop talking because they could hear me. Sometimes when I open her front door, she would demand that I close it quickly to prevent the spirit standing outside her porch from coming into her house. If I go home after dark, she might tell me to be careful because ghosts are standing outside surrounding my car. We can't even have our own private time because the spirits don't approve of any violation of chastity and will make her sick for several days as a punishment. At home, she talks to herself in a nonsensical manner. She whispers to the spirits like she's telling secrets, and she also communicates telepathically with her dog, bird, and fish. She knows that people, including me, think that she's crazy, but she just laughs about it and assures me that she's not crazy. Every time when we eat at her dinner table, she always feeds the spirits. She would put a plate on the table in front of an empty seat, and then put some food on the plate and tell the spirits to eat. She tells me that she does that to keep the spirits from bothering her so that she gets to eat in peace. Occasionally, she gets scary, especially during cooking. I've personally witnessed a few episodes in which she gets mad at a spirit, swearing at them, holding up her cookie knife and threatening to kill them if they don't leave her alone. 
I'm quite traumatized by those episodes that remain in my head of her holding a knife and cursing out the ghosts. These moments remain fresh in my mind. This is something that I'll probably never forget. I even get a few nightmares about it. Once I approached my cousin who has a master's degree in clinical social work and told him about my girlfriend's weird behavior. He chuckled and told me that there's no ghosts bothering my girlfriend, but that my girlfriend is probably experiencing some mental problems due to traumatic life events, like her divorce and everything else that comes with it. I like to believe in my cousin, but I feel that in my girlfriend's case, there could perhaps be some evil spirits at work. Interested in sharing your stories? Submit them to momchronicles at gmail.com or in the description below. Here is the next story. Thank you. As a kid, my friend and I would always go to a park next to where we live. Far from a distance, there is one old tree house. It looks empty and old and dusty. No one dares to go and check it out because we would always scare ourselves before we even get to it. You know how we kids are just naughty and curious about things, and we do it without thinking ahead. Well, I was pretty smart not to go with them when they asked me to go along and play in the treehouse. The tree was tall, but there were these planks of wood nailed into the tree so that you could climb up, but obviously it didn't look steady at all. After they all decided to go play in there, I left and went to go catch dragonflies and baby lobsters under a little bridge and then went home. The next day, they told me about what happened. They said that when they entered the treehouse, there was already this girl in there. The girl asked to play with them. Without thinking that it could have been a Banzong, they thought that it was just another girl. They played and played until it was getting dark, and then they wanted to go home, but the girl wouldn't let them leave. She said, Please don't go home. Please play with me. You guys are my friends. My friends didn't want to stay anymore, so they got up and were about to leave, when the girl suddenly stood up and stomped around. She shut the little door tight and it was pitch black. She got very angry and started crying super loud, and then started laughing. There was blood coming out of the girl's eyes when she started crying. It wasn't a sad or cute cry, it was a very frightening cry. My friends then got scared and pounded at the door, trying to get out and push the ghost girl down to the floor. She started laughing louder and louder. She started telling them that they were going to stay with her forever, that she was going to take them with her. At that moment, their parents were looking for them. Just gladly in the nick of time, their parents found them and were also scared to death because they knew that a little girl had died in that treehouse. Quickly and in a panic, the parents grabbed their kids and hurried home. My friends were crying and they seeked for a shaman. I have no idea what happened to the little girl, but I was really scared and never got close to that treehouse. But then things just got normal again and I forgot about it. One day when I was walking past the treehouse to go search for my brothers because it was getting dark, I caught myself staring at the treehouse and saw a doll sitting by the door. Its head was tilted and smiling. It looked like it was staring at me. I got scared and of course dolls are creepy as heck so I ran. What I think in my opinion is that the doll that I saw was the little girl. I don't know how she died but I'm never going there ever again. True story but I won't go into too much detail. Back in 2006, I met this Hmong Li guy, let's call him Tony, through a friend of mine. Tony's wife had just passed away, leaving behind three sons, which I didn't know at the time until a few weeks later. That's when things started to happen. In time, I met his sons and they were wonderful kids. 
I would go over and just hang out with them, which was good until one night, strange things started to happen at my place. When I lit up a candle, it would go out as if a wind was blowing at it. One night, I went to bed and had a dream that a girl was chasing me forever in this long hallway. As I was running to the end of this hallway, there was a door, and that was my only way out, as I thought. So I opened the door, and it was as if I was up in the sky. She came behind me and tried to push me. I woke up and took off running out the front door, leaving it open all night. I called Tony and told him about what happened. We couldn't figure out what was going on and why it was happening to me, so I slept over at his place. As I laid there, listening to him sleep, I started to smell this rotten egg-like stench. It smelled so bad I just wanted to gag, but I was thinking that perhaps maybe Tony had farted while he was asleep, so all I did was cover my nose. The smell would go away, but then it would come right back. It did that for most of the night. I gave up and got up to go watch TV in the living room. Time went by and I told my friend what was happening. That's when he told me something terrifying. Do you not know? Before Tony's wife was going to pass away, he made a promise to love his sons, find them a good mother, and most importantly, he promised her that he would not date any girls until after a year after her death had passed. That's when everything made sense of what was happening. I confronted Tony, and it broke my heart to have left those kids. But I couldn't be with someone who had an angry ghost wife that was going to be haunting me and following him around because of a broken promise that he couldn't keep to her. So yes, I left this relationship and everything paranormal stopped. My life went back to being the same. I apologized to his dead wife and asked her to leave me alone. So, nothing has ever happened to me ever since then. And moral of the story, don't date someone who has a dead spouse. They could be haunting you in your sleep, you know. This happened a few years back when my youngest sister was only two years old. It was a school day, but I didn't go to school because honestly, it was just a day that I didn't feel like going. So I told my dad that I didn't feel well enough to go. You know, the usual excuse you tell your parents to skip out on school. Anyways, he told me to stay home and to watch my baby sister because he had a lot of errands to run that day. Before he left, he reminded me that my sister was still asleep in her crib. So for me to listen for when she woke up. I said okay and he left just the two of us home. My room was the first room when you walk down the hallway, and my parents' room was the last one, and that's where my sister slept. I kept my door open so that way when my sister wakes up, she would know to come to my room. She never cries when she wakes up and she knows how to climb out of her crib by that time. My bed was facing straight across from the door, so I laid on my stomach while I was typing out my school essay on a laptop. A while later, I heard little footsteps running. When I looked out the door, I saw a little girl, my sister's height, in a white dress running past my room to the kitchen. I thought that she went to look for my dad, so I got out and called her name to let her know that I was there. Usually she would run to me, but this time she didn't. I thought it was strange, so I peeked into the kitchen and living room and didn't see her there. I decided to check my parents' room and saw that she was still deep asleep, snoring and all. I knew it couldn't have been her because if she did run back, I would have saw or heard her. Our house was pretty creaky, so she would have made some noise at least. I freaked out and ran back to my room and just locked my door. A while later, I didn't hear any footsteps approaching my door, but all of a sudden, someone was twisting my doorknob back and forth really fast trying to open it. I stared at my doorknob until it stopped. A stupid part of me was like, what if it's my baby sister? 
so I opened the door, but no one was there. I checked on my sister, and she was still asleep. Again, I ran into my room and locked my door. This time, I just stared at the door, wondering what was going to happen next. Soon enough, what do you know? Footsteps were approaching my room, but this time, whatever it was, was opening my door slowly. When it realized it was locked, it knocked and spoke to me. Pa, open the door. I was relieved it was my baby sister's voice. Or was it? Paranoid, I didn't want to open it. I was scared that maybe a ghost was pretending to be my sister. But then it started to cry because I didn't open the door. I finally gathered up my courage and went to check once again. This time, it was my sister. I told her to come into my room, but she just stood there asking me for a bottle of milk. I told her that I'll get it for her later, but she started whining, and the more she whined, the scarier it got. I was so scared that I pulled her into the room, but she fell onto the floor. So I locked my door and stayed there until my dad came home.